I'm gonna do another update here. My lamp has apparently broken, so I hope that it's not too dark, but I, I, I think it's okay, but uh, yeah, well, I usually have it on, so that's why I'm, I mention it. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I'm just gonna do another, another update here. Um, usually these last few updates I've shown you stuff that I've shown you before, uh, but uh, now I have actually watched them. But I, I could start with a few things that I haven't shown before. Uh, so, well, well, two things actually. Unfortunately, it's no more. But, but um, you know, for, for maybe a few people who don't care to see, you know, listen to me talk about movies I've already shown. Uh, but again, I will be able to say things now about them that I couldn't before. Anyway, the two things that I actually got for Easter, and I know I've been saying that I, I'm, I'm not going to get any more stuff until I watched everything, and I haven't, but uh, usually I get something for Easter from my dad. And um, um, this year uh, he sent me a, message, a text message asking me basically if there were any DVDs that I wanted, because he knows that that's the only thing that you can give me, <laughs> DVDs. Well, it's it's a safe card or whatever you say. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if that's the expression, but it's like um, if, he, if he doesn't know what to give me, he'll give me DVDs. Or, well, he always gives me DVDs, even if... Uh, anyway, I'll just show these two. <laughs> uh, well, actually, he gave me season four and five of Californication, but I, I, I only wrote season 5 in the, in the text message, so I guess he, well, doesn't matter, but, um, um, so I, I changed season 4 for this one, Breaking Bad, and this one is more expensive, but I also got a, got a little, a little money from my mom for Easter, so, um, I added that and was able to get this, I would have been able to get it anyway, you know, but, uh, I wasn't gonna buy anything with my own money until, you know the story by now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I got these two. Uh, Californication, a lot of fun. Uh, I, I said to my sister, like, um, um, when she saw that I got this, she has, hasn't seen it. And, you know, yeah, and then there's going to be a sixth season now as well. Then I got home and I, I found out that the sixth one is already filmed. And the seventh one is going to arrive soon. So, uh, so I, I don't know how I could how I could think that the sixth one was going to be the next. Because this one, I'm aware of the fact that this one has aired on TV a long time back, like a year ago or more. So, uh, it's not that new anymore, so I don't know how I... Well, it doesn't matter, but two more seasons, that's great. I'm not sure if there's going to be an eighth one after that, I mean, it doesn't seem like it. Somehow it seems like the seventh one might be the last, but I don't know. Anyway, uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, really happy to have it. This was incredible, especially. Well, I have the well. The, f the first few episodes were a little, a little slow. Not as good as it has been before, maybe. But when it got going, it definitely got going, because the last couple of episodes, uh, you know, they're really good. Um, and uh, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but I, I, I think I can say that this season gives you some closure, or it does provide some closure to what's happening, which have to mean that season 5 will, you know, um, um, well, in season 5 something new will happen. Uh, uh, so, you know, I don't know what that will be, but I'm looking forward to it. And of course season 5 is the last season, uh, and part 1 of season 5 will be released on DVD in uh, two months, I think. A little bit less, maybe. So, uh, yeah. Uh, now I have a lot of stuff to go through, so I'm just gonna... I'm not gonna be rather quick. And I'm gonna start with the Blu-rays. I have three of them. Yes, three. Uh, first is uh, King's Speech. Uh, this one, uh, along with the next one I bought from um, Eric. Um, the Lonesome Foghorn. Uh, and uh, I've seen this before, but I actually liked it a, li a little more now that I saw it again. I think it's really good. Last time I pretty much only liked, or not only, but it was pretty much the only thing that I felt like I could praise. Uh, and that was the, the visuals. 
but now I feel that there are more elements that, that got to me the second time. Anyway, uh, then uh, also I got from him a uh, thin red line. This was a long time back, but uh, I haven't seen them until now. So, um, Yeah, this was really good, uh, but then maybe the second, I mean the, the last third of the movie or so was a little bit less, was, it wasn't, was, li was a little bit lacking in quality, I thought, or it uh, wasn't as interesting, because I thought that it was really incredible how they could make a movie where for at least, well, for over an hour, you see nothing but grass, you know, it's high grass and people running around crouching and, run and, uh, and uh, you know, trying to um, capture this uh, hill or whatever, uh, or not capture, but uh, you know, um, anyway, seize it or whatever the word is. Uh, so um, and how it could be still so interesting and uh, and uh, suspenseful when the surroundings were grass and nothing else for over an hour. That was uh, I I was just pretty impressed by that. Uh, it's still a good movie after it it ended, but I just thought that it the last part of it or the you know the last hour maybe even was a little a little worse. Um, then we got the, the life and death of a porno gang. I thought this had some pretty good elements, like uh, the main character, he has this vision of a movie that he wants to make. And that movie is just insane. And uh, I thought that the, it was really ambitious how they put down so much energy and effort on this short sequence that a character in the movie has about a movie he wants to make. Just kind of, It doesn't have anything to do with the story, really, of that movie. He just th imagines the scenes and that's that. And it just felt really ambitious. And there were a few, there were a few things like that, but mainly I thought this was, this was just uh, unpleasant, and it's not supposed to be a feel-good movie or a family-friendly movie or what have you. But I don't know, it was, it wasn't un unpleasant in a very good way. I thought, I, I, I don't know. Um, now I just realized I have one more Blu-ray to show you, which I, well, I forgot about. But um, anyway, it was a, it was an okay movie, um, and then we have Killer Joe, which uh, was a lot of fun. Um, I don't know, not extremely shocking. It's, it's rated NC seventeen, but uh, but I have to say though, something about the chicken scene, which is uh, the scene that gave the movie the NC seventeen rating. Um, something I mean, it, uh, you know, it's just chicken in her mouth. And she has been punched in the face before, you know, I mean, sure, it's kind of uh, disturbing, of course, but like an NC-17 rating, like, but, but then as I was watching it, I felt kind of a little bit sick to my stomach for some reason. I don't know what it was, but just with the blood dripping down and the chicken starting to get, um, you know, her saliva sort of um, makes the, uh, the skin of it fall off. And it's, I don't know, it was just something of it something about it which was kind of um, unsettling <laughs> so uh, somehow in a way I can see that it's NC-17 but I actually have one more Blu-ray I just I just found it in the pile here it is Fight Club um, yeah I've seen this before but I'm not sure if I've seen the whole thing um, but um, I, 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 I kind of knew the twist, not to 100%, but I kn knew approximately what the twist was. And now w watching it again, I was expecting to be blown away, um, even though I kind of knew it already. But I didn't know exactly how it was going to happen. But I don't know, I just found the twist to be kind of, kind of tame in a way. Kind of... Um, not anticlimactic, maybe, but almost, you know, I don't know, not very satisfying. And it didn't, didn't really work to me either that well. Uh, to me, I, sh I, I don't think they should have done the twist. Maybe you, you can call me crazy with that, and that's okay, but I just think that it would be better off with some other ending. Although I will say that the ending, the last scene, is really cool with the buildings. Um, and then this one, uh, I really want to give it an 8 out of 10 because. It is really a wonderful movie, but a few things in it is just, a, I don't know. It's so obvious that they improvise some of it, and that some of it is, you know, 
for example, they burst out laughing slightly a few times. Takeshi Kitano, when he speaks, uh, he almost um, he starts laughing in while he's talking about certain things, which makes it obvious that maybe he, maybe he improvised that and he found it to be fun himself. So he started laughing while he said it, and a, f and a, f a few of those times, the little, a little kid also starts laughing, uh, and then they cut away pretty quickly. But um, they obviously must have kn known that they laughed a little bit uh, off character in the movie. Uh, and just something about that was kind of fun, but at the same time, I don't know if it... I, it's, I have a lot to say about it. I should, should organize my thoughts before I deliver them, but <laughs> I don't know. Definitely liked it and I would recommend it, but... Um, um, well... Uh, I'd recommend it. You can see for yourself what you think about about that. Uh, but uh, A Bittersweet Life is the next one. Also very good. Um, I don't really have that many, many thoughts about it, but um, I thought that it was really good in, in a way. Uh, <clears throat> then we got a movie called Expired, which was interesting. Uh, the main thing about this, which I don't know if I'm ambivalent or if I'm just if I just simply don't like it, but the way Jason Patrick acts, he's so extremely unpredictable and uh, in a way that's kind of interesting to see what he does next, but in a way I just I don't really like it the way he's acting. Um, but you know they have a very, um, what's the word, uh, sort of an odd couple relationship, a very sort of eccentric uh, relationship which uh, you know it's it's uh, interesting and it's a uh, kind of original but um, anyway it was it was pr was a pretty good movie definitely but uh, yeah uh, then we got a movie called hide and go shriek this one had one good scene which was there's an elevator scene someone is uh, the elevator goes up there's no door so she's able to put her head down she's on the roof of the elevator so she's able to put and there's no door so she's able to put her head down and look at the people who are in the elevator but as it goes up her head gets severed she gets decapitated by uh, you know the wall or whatever uh, and uh, that scene is really well done and uh, I think it should have should have had more of more of that uh, other than that it was really bad actually and the ending was fucking terrible <laughs> it was awful um, then we got uh, the dog problem, which was fun, uh, made by Scott, uh, whatever his name is, Scott Kahn. Uh, I thought it was a fun movie, definitely. Uh, then we got, uh, I don't even know when I bought this, uh, it's Hoarders Season 2 Part 1. There's no Part 2 of this, they never released it. Um, and I sort of uh, was looking around if they maybe was going to release it, or maybe they have, but I just have missed it. And that was before I bought this one, because I was sure that whenever they will release it, or if they will, I'm going to get it. But now I'm not so sure, because as I saw this, I just started getting annoyed with the show. The season one was really good, and I really enjoyed it. And I don't think it's the episodes here that are weaker. I think it's just my opinion of the show as a whole that has definitely changed as I saw this as I just just as I watched more of it I just didn't like it I just thought it was annoying and just so repetitive I mean the episodes they're kind of interesting if you watch one of them and you have, if you haven't seen it before but when you start watching like 10 of them I mean it's not that interesting anymore so I don't know and I think they've done like seven seasons of it too so for the people who've seen every episode I don't really know how you can still <laughs> be interested in it, to be honest. Um, anyway, uh, we got... I got this a long time ago. A year ago, maybe. <laughs> maybe. It's um, Edinburgh, Edinburgh in Paradise and Other Personal Voyages. I've just finished it, or, well, two weeks ago, maybe. Something like that. This one contains Ad Edinburgh in Paradise, A Blank on the Map, The Lost Gods of Easter Island, Bowerbirds, The Art of Seduction, The Song of the Earth, Life on Air, and The Amber Time Machine. So, uh, 
7 features and there is I think these are sort of made for TV uh, 50 minute specials you know something like that and they uh, they range in um, in, uh, in in subjects in what they're about you know but uh, it's all with David Ad Attenborough of course and uh, I thought that some were pretty uninteresting as a ho some I mean they all had interesting parts in the, I mean somewhere in them but a few of them were just a little uninteresting uh, as a whole but uh, at least um, Bowerbirds, The Art of Seduction was pretty interesting. Uh, the Life life on Air, about his life uh, with Michael Palin was, was pretty good. And A Blank on the Map was good as well, where they, he, uh, it's from the 70s, early 70s, and he visits this uh, uh, civilization or this, um, uh, this um, tribe uh, who haven't had any con contact with the outside world ever, you know. Um, and I have, a, I have a few more things to say about it, but I have a few more things to go through, so I kind of want to be brief, as brief as possible. Uh, although I know that I might, I might still be long-winded. <laughs> but I'm uh, going as fast as I can. Uh, Money Talks. Cr Charlie Sheen, Chris Tucker. Known about this movie for a while. Found it for a cheap price. Bought it, and uh, it, it, was, it was pretty good, actually. Um, then we got uh, Talk Radio. Which I think it would have been interesting if this movie, because the, the first half hour or so has a really fast pace uh, while still only staying in one room pretty much. Because uh, he's a talk show host, this uh, guy uh, on the back here, who I said looks like Jerry Seinfeld last time I showed you this. And I still think he does in that picture. Uh, um, and it's about him, he takes these calls. I don't know what the type of show is called, but anybody can call in and he talks to them about their problems basically and um, he's controversial so uh, through this half hour and through the broadcast there's like a few short pauses in between too so it's not a whole consecutive 30 minute broadcast but more or less actually uh, and through that 30 minutes uh, he sort of starts getting into trouble a little bit uh, he doesn't seem to care um, he, he actually gets sort of a, a threat uh, on the phone and he the other ones in like the control room or whatever they uh, maybe understand the seriousness more than he does and anyway after a half an hour they leave that room and uh, I thought that they would but I, I hope that they wouldn't because I thought that it would be interesting if the whole one hour and 40 minutes would be more of that you know if 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 the movie is 105 minutes um, the happenings in the movie is also 105 minutes uh, because I think it would be really cool uh, to see well, I don't know if it's based on a book or whatever then they couldn't do that obviously but um, well actually it says it's based on actual events so maybe there's it would be a bit of a difficulty to change it but I'm just saying that it would be interesting to see the whole movie in that one setting that they introduced to you in the very beginning anyway uh, <laughs> Then we got Renaissance Man with Danny, Danny, Danny DeVito. Try to get all of his stuff that I'm interested in, uh, especially the comedy movies. This one was pretty bad, actually. Uh, not much more to say about it. And also, I am very uninterested in Shakespeare, so. Uh, un uninterested, that is, if you didn't catch what I said. Uh, um, yeah, so. And this is, about, this is about Shakespeare's work, more or less. It's not an adaptation of his work, but it's uh, they talk about it throughout the whole of the movie. Anyway, um, then we got the... Well, I don't think it's an adaptation anyway. I don't know, but... I, anyway, uh, Storm Warning. Uh, pretty bad, I have to say. Some good gore, but ultimately very uninteresting. Uh, then we got uh, Larry Flint, which was, in a way, was kind of all over the place, actually, but... There was something about that that I liked. Uh, Woody Harrelson's character, he's obviously... He doesn't give a fuck. Well, maybe he does, you know, in his own way, but... Seemingly to everybody, he just doesn't give a fuck, you know? And uh, in a way, the way the movie was edited and stuff... Was kind of the same way as he behaved, in a way. It was just at the same sort of... Almost like disoriented development, in a way. Uh, not entirely, but... 
there was almost like a parallel there, which maybe was one of the reasons why I liked it, despite thinking that the whole thing was a little bit, I don't know, uh, weird, weird, weirdly put to get put together maybe. But uh, yeah, so as I said, that also made it interesting for the way he behaves in the movie. Anyway, uh, yeah, Woody Harrelson always liked him, and um, I thought it was a good movie. Not great, but good. Um, then this one started out really good. It's the same thing with me in movies. It started out good, then it got turned into crap. I don't know what's with me, but that's just how it is a lot of the times. And this is one of those. Jeepers Creepers was really cool with the in the beginning. Then it just got uh, too... It wasn't necessarily convoluted, but it just they added too much shit that they didn't need to add uh, on top of it. And it just... They just could. They could have done without some of the supernatural elements and just made a creepy movie, maybe a bit more down to earth or whatever. And I think they would have been better off. But that's just my opinion. Um, then we got a really badass movie. Uh, you've got you've got mail. I really like this one. It's not a gr it's not a great movie. Maybe it's not even a good movie. I don't know what I would say about that, but at least I really enjoyed it, and I, I like it a lot. And um, made me think of The Holiday a little bit. I love The Holiday, and I'm, and I'm, I'm not going to den deny that, unless I happen to change my mind about the movie. But um, this and this one had gave me sort of the same sort of cozy feeling that 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 movie does, but it's not the same quality. It doesn't have the same. It's not. It's not as good, uh, but definitely, um, definitely pretty good. Um, then we have a Dream for an Insomniac, another one that I bought a long time ago that I haven't seen yet, not been interested in it. And I think there was one day where I was going to bed and I was like, ah, I'm not tired, I'll watch some simple or some movie you don't need to concentrate. Uh, and I put, put this on and... Um, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, this one I also bought a long time ago. And uh, it is uh, Foo Fighters live at Wembley Stadium. And I have seen parts of this before. Probably this concert was aired on TV. This one is from 2008 maybe, I think. Uh, well, yeah, I think so. Um, so maybe around, or maybe 2008. Uh, this was aired on TV, and I, I saw some of it. And also, I've seen clips from uh, the Foo Fighters documentary. I think they talked about it here. I think th I think they talked about this one in the documentary. Um, back and forth, or whatever it's called. Um, so, I was kind of familiar with, with the performance here already. But uh, I, I enjoyed watching it very much. I thought it was a very solid performance. Very well made. Or, I mean, well made. Very well played. Very well performed, or whatever. And, um, <clears throat> I don't know, uh, I, I mean, I love the band, and, uh, yeah, and it's cool to see Jimmy Page, and, uh, I forget the other guy's name, actually, but he joined them into Led, Ze Led Zeppelin songs in, by the end of it. Um, and lastly, we have another, t another TV show, and this one is uh, Big Love Season 2. Uh, I have not seen this show since I saw season one. No, but I haven't seen it in uh, a year or two. Probably about, well, maybe not two years, but almost, I think. Um, well, but anyway, it's enough for me to have forgotten what happened in the first one, more or less. I had to, um, well, throughout the season, I was reminded about things, and I remembered things. Oh, yeah, that's what happened, you know, and, um, and such. And also I had to look up online and I understood a little more. But still there were details that I couldn't understand because it's been such a long time since I saw the first one. And since then I've just sort of forgotten about the characters and their, and their, uh, you know, their uh, disputes and whatever happens. Uh, all conflicts. Uh, so uh, I had to sort of build up my, uh, this show again or whatever. And that happens sometimes when I wait too long with getting another season of a show. 
So I'm trying not to wait more than, well, not more than a year anyway. Uh, but there are a few shows now that I need to get pretty soon if I don't want to wait that long again. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of, maybe you should watch them all in one go or whatever for that not to happen. Anyway, that's all for this time. Whole bunch of stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that. And uh, thank you for watching.